Hey everyone, welcome back, Professor Inc. here. So today we're gonna to talk about flags in C++. And this idea of flags, it's not something that's limited to C++. I mean, you can implement these in any programming language, but we're gonna talk about them in C++ today. So, you know, what's the big idea? What's the concept behind flags? Well, flag is just a Boolean or integer variable that can signal when a condition exists. So it can be a way of delaying actions in your program when you need to do so. So let's take a look at some examples. So let's say that I wanted to know if Elvis has left the building. Then I might have a variable, a Boolean variable, um, called Elvis has left the building. So I'll initialize that to false because Elvis hasn't left the building yet. And so, you know, you might then have a bunch of code that executes and you could then ask, you know, the user, has Elvis left the building, right? You can say something like, uh, has Elvis left the building? Has Elvis left the building? Yes or no, okay? And then the user could enter in their response, yes or no. And depending on that response, and we'll go ahead and make this a character variable, yes or no. Depending on the response, you know, we might do something, we might, say, well, if yes or no equals uh, yes, then we'll go ahead and set Elvis has left the building to true, okay? And then you can have a whole bunch of code execute and you don't have to take action now immediately based on whether or not Elvis has left the building. You can defer that until later, right? So you can have a whole bunch of other code that executes in the meantime. And then later on, you could say something like, well, if Elvis has left the building equals true, then you can do something. You can say something like, you know, say out, thank you very much. You know, otherwise, you know, maybe do something else or, or whatever, whatever you need to do. Um, you could say, see out, it's time for an encore or something. Right? The point being here is that, you know, we didn't have to make this decision immediately upon whether or not the user entered in yes or no. We can delay actions until later on in the program. And that's the main idea, that's the big idea. Now you're not just limited to using Boolean variables for this, you could also use integer variables. So we might do something like, you know, integer has Elvis left the building, right? And then initialize that to zero because zero is false. Right? Internally, remember, true or false is represented internally as zero for false, and then any non-zero is true. So here, instead of saying Elvis has left the building equals true, we could do something like Elvis has left the building plus plus, which simply increments the integer variable Elvis has left the building. So now, once this executes, it's not zero anymore, it's one, and so that's going to evaluate true. So here we can just say, you know, if Elvis has left the building is greater than zero. If it is, then we'll say, thank you very much. Otherwise, we'll say it's time for an encore, right? So you have options as to which one of these you want to do. And later on in more advanced programming, you know, this integer version of a flag opens up a lot of possibility, especially in multi-threaded programming, say. Okay, so now you know how to implement a flag in C++. You know two ways of doing it, whether it's using a Boolean variable or an integer variable. And you know the reasons for why you might want to do it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.